James uh-huh. chapter 4, on, verses 13 through 14. James Amen. chapter 4, uh-huh. verses 13 through 14. Here's what the scripture says. It says, look here. You who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. In the King James Version it says a vapor. It is here for a little while. Then it's gone. The title of today's word is Make It Make Sense. Make it make sense. You know, at a time like this, many will say it was his time. I don't think that's true. The way this young brother left this life was not the will of God, nor the plan of God. But God does allow life to life. Come on, All right. Things happen in life, yeah. but it's good to know uh-huh. that God has a master plan, yeah. which yeah. is eternal life. Yeah. You know, I, in verses 13 and 14, it shares with us that life yeah. is short. And to live life Uh as if tomorrow is old to us is not wise, nor does it make good sense. We don't know when our time is coming. We're crying for this brother today, but tomorrow Tomorrow. it could be us. The writer of this text urges us to to live a life with eternal purpose. It's it's, it's bigger than where I am. It's bigger than what I'm dealing with. There's a purpose to why I woke up today. I never had the opportunity to meet my young brother. But I read in the paper that he was a a good daddy. And when I asked mom to to tell me something about him, a huge smile came on her face as she spoke of his personality, knowing how to to capture a room, personable. Can I tell you that the life that we live ought to accomplish a couple things. Don't get ready to hear a lot of noise. Yes, sir. I'm just talking with us today. Come on. All right. The life that we live yes. ought to accomplish uh-huh. a couple things. Come on, preacher. First, we should make an impact that leaves a mark beyond our years. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The people that came in contact with us. Yes what they experienced, what they felt from us. We ought to leave an impact that lives on beyond our years. Today, as a, as a preacher, I, I always remember my great granddaddy. Now, even when I was out there running, even when I was doing what I desired to do. I always had my, the mark that my great granddaddy made on my life and my mind. Didn't matter how much weed I smoked. Didn't matter how much E and J or Hennessy I drank. I could always remember the impact that my great granddaddy made on my life. Come on, preacher. I could remember how he would, I would go to Equipment, Georgia during the summer and spend time with him on the farm. Yeah. And as much as I was running at home, Equipment, he was able to 
to show me how to be a man. He was able to, to show me how to make a difference in life. And even when I ran and did what I wanted from 17 to, to 27, I still remember that when I finally decided to stop running, and I can remember I was, I was, I was running a, an adult entertainment service and, 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 and basically living life, trying to chase that dollar. Yeah. And I can remember something just wasn't right in my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And so I began to slow down. I went and talked to all the young ladies that worked for me. I said, hey, I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't know God trying to tell me somebody about to take me out. I don't know what's going on. But I got to step back. Yeah. I got to step back. Yeah. And so what you knew as employment is not going to be employment anymore. I have to step back. Yeah. And God led me now. I, I, I had an, a, a front. I had an auto detail business that, you know, that, that showed that I was doing legitimate stuff. But I can remember I went and sat down and talked to my great. He was right over at my house in Duval. Yeah. I would just go and sit and talk with him just listening to what he had to say because he made an impact on my life. Yeah. I was struggling, I was trying to deal yeah. with what, 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 what adjustments do I need to do on, to be the man that, that God has ordained me to be? Uh -huh. Apparently what I'm doing right now ain't working and God's troubling my spirit. Yeah. What exactly is that? And I said I would just sit and listen to him. Yeah. He was about 88 years old at the time and I would just sit and, and listen to him. Yeah. And I think about now as a man, the fact that this man ain't have a college education. Well, man was a farmer and a country preacher. But the example yeah. that he lived before me made an impact on my life to when I was confused, yeah. I sought out him just yeah. to hear his words. Mm. My brothers and sisters, we have to live a life that when people that, are, that look up to us, yeah trying to figure life out yeah. and they get to that point that everybody will get to yeah. that hopefully we would have made an impact that they could come to us yeah. for direction yeah. Come on. Yeah. so one I think we ought to make an impact yeah. beyond yeah. our years yeah. but the second thing I think that we ought to do is we ought to live with a purpose of gaining eternal life. Yes, Lord. Now there was a lot of things that's out there before us that we want to try to gain and it's all fine. Yeah. But in the end yeah. we want to gain eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. My issue was that I was born in the church, I was raised in the church, but I felt like that was the white man's religion. Yeah. But something wouldn't sit right. I knew that I wasn't going to live forever yeah. and that I had to live a life that was bigger than what I was dealing with right then. Come on. I tried some stuff. I, I yeah. looked at that God. I looked at that God. But yeah. well, God sent me back to the God of my grandmother. Yeah. Yes, Lord. But I had to make it make sense. And so I began to study on my own yeah. to, to, to decipher the lies that had been told by, by some other folk. Yeah. They began to straighten up some crooked things that, yeah. that some other folk had used to, to yeah. oppress and to hold us down. And, and God began to show me the truth yeah. in my faith. Yeah. And then began to give me a bigger purpose of living. Yeah. That when this thing is all said and done, after I've taken my last breath, yeah. after this thing is a done yeah. deal and you can yeah. stick a fork in it, yeah. That in the end, yeah. I can hear God say, well done, well done. my good yeah. and faithful yeah. servant. Yeah. After I tried my best and if yeah. I've done all my all, yeah. in the end, I want to hear God say, well done. well done. And so my brothers and sisters, uh -huh. I encourage us also to live a life of eternal purpose. Yeah. Know that whatever yeah. we're dealing with down here, whatever we're gaining down here, yeah. whatever we're accessing down here, yeah. that it's only temporary. Yeah. But we are living a life trying to live eternally. Yeah. There was this guy named Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, and you might have heard it. He wrote this very short poem, and it makes a lot of sense because time 
It passes. Time is filled yeah. with swift, with swift transition. Time passes yeah. by quick, yeah. and we don't know how quick it's going to pass by. But Dr. Mays, he wrote this poem that speaks to the advantage of every moment living a life of purpose. And, and I know we like to have a good time. I, I know we like to have to, to enjoy life, but, but life also has to have purpose. And he wrote this poem about living a life of eternal purpose. He, he, he wrote this poem entitled, I Have Only Just a Minute. Yeah. I have only just a minute. I, I don't know about you, but, but that's the one thing that we don't get back. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can get a second chance at, but time we don't get a second chance at it. Uh, when I stood up here, I said I needed to be finished by 4.15 uh, so that we can get on to the funeral home, I mean, get on to the cemetery. Uh, but can I tell you, one minute ago was 4.12, uh, and I don't get 4.12 back. Uh, whatever I did in 4.12, 4.12, uh, 4.12 will never come again. Uh, and can I tell you, the life that we have with our loved ones, Ones, uh, and the life that we have to make an impact, uh, the life that we have to spend with folk that we care about, uh, we only have that time that we have. Uh, and when that time is passed, uh, we can apologize, uh, we can say that we're sorry for mistakes, uh, we can reminisce on it, uh, but the time is gone. Uh, and Dr. Mays, he said it this way, uh, I have only just a minute. Uh, it's only 60 seconds in it. Uh, it was forced upon me. I can't refuse it. Uh, I didn't seek it, yes. I didn't choose it, yes. but it's up to me to use it. Yes. I must suffer if I lose it. Yes. Give account if I abuse it. Yes. Just a tiny little minute, but yes. eternity is in it. Yes. Can I tell you that none of us knows how long we will be allowed to live this life. Yes. I'm sure my brother, he thought that he would see an age older than his last age that he was able to see. And many of us, we're thinking that we're going to live this long life. But nothing is promised. Yeah. But since we know uh, that our purpose uh, is not only to make an impact uh, on this side, uh, but also to gain eternal life, uh, so I ask this question uh, as we live, uh, and I encourage somebody, uh, as you live your life, uh, make it make sense. Uh, and you, when you wake up in the morning uh, and you go to do what you're going to do, uh, make it make sense. Uh, the choices that we make in our lives, uh, make it make sense. Uh, don't allow some to get you so frustrated to, to where you forget okay. your purpose uh, and come out of your personality. Make your life make sense. Uh, if you're a daddy, uh, be the best daddy that you can be. Uh, if you're a husband, uh, be the best husband that you can be. Uh, if you're a mother, uh, be the best mother that you can be. Uh, but make your life make sense. Uh, those that look up to you, uh, make an impact on their lives uh, so that when they can struggle, uh, they can look to you uh, and say, I knew a man, I knew a woman that I ran upon one day. He had his head up high, had her shoulders up high, and walked like somebody. Is there a witness in the high? And so if I encourage you, make your life make sense. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. All your help comes from the Lord. Enjoy yourself. Do what you're going to do. But in the end, you want to see Jesus. And you want to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'll make you ruler over me. Is there a witness in the house? Make it make sense.